the bat. Back in the 1980s, there was a huge rock star named Jane Citrus. For a few years, she had top hit after top hit. She was a twig-like teenager with bleach blonde hair. Jane Citrus was controversial due to her tendency to dress provocatively. On top of that, many of her hit songs had sexual themes. My buddy Kurt was a huge Jane Citrus fan. He loved her. He had all three of her albums. His room was wallpapered with her posters. He didn't mind crossing state lines to see her in concert multiple times. One of the things about Jane Citrus was that she loved to make music videos. At least half of the songs on her albums had accompanying videos. The videos of her songs were like mini-movies, and Jane Citrus always played the lead role. Kurt used to go on and on about what an incredible actress Jane Citrus was. He was convinced that one day she'd be in a movie and would win an Oscar for Best Actress. He used to say over and over that Jane Citrus will be up on that stage holding the Oscar. After a while, it started to get on my nerves. I mean, she seemed like a decent actress based on the videos, but there was no way in the world she was ever going to win an Oscar. No way. Never. One day I told him that. He replied with, put your money where your mouth is. Fine, I said. I'll give you a thousand to one odds that Jane Citrus never wins an Oscar for Best Actress. He said, oh, she'll be up there holding that Oscar one day. You're on. I'll bet you 100 bucks. And that was the bet. If Jane Citrus ever won an Oscar for Best Actress, I'd owe Kurt $100,000. If she never won, he'd owe me 100. We even wrote it all down as a contract and signed it in front of his dad, who happened to be a lawyer. It was a stupid bet on my part. I mean, for Kurt, he could win the bet if she ever won the Oscar, but how was I supposed to win? As long as she was alive, there was a possibility that she could win an Oscar, so Kurt always had a chance, no matter how ridiculously remote it was. Me, on the other hand, the only way I could win the bet would be if Jane Citrus died, and then all I'd get out of it was a measly 100 bucks. Yeah, a really stupid bet on my part. Fast forward 30 years. I have a good job and I've managed to save up a nice amount of money, but it's nowhere near what it would be if I weren't divorced and forced to pay alimony. Kurt and I lost contact when we both went away to different colleges. As for Jane Citrus, she fell off the map. When the 1980s ended and the 1990s grunge bands took over, she just vanished. All three of her albums were fantastic successes. She made enough money off of all of those that she could live like a queen for the rest of her life if she so desired. And maybe that's what she did, I don't know. All I know is it had been over 30 years since anyone had heard of the name Jane Citrus. Then a funny thing happened. Last year, a hotshot filmmaker reached out to Jane Citrus and offered her a huge part in his next movie. Apparently this guy had been a big fan and always thought she had acting talent based on her music videos. And just like that, Jane Citrus came out of hiding, took the part, and nailed it. I mean, she absolutely killed in that role. It was one of the best acting jobs I had ever seen. Last week, they announced the Oscar nominations. Jane Citrus is nominated for Best Actress, and according to the odds, she is an overwhelming favorite to win. That's when I remembered the bet. I hoped Kurt had forgotten about that stupid bet, or that maybe he was dead. No such luck. He found me on a social network and sent me a message. He didn't even open his message with, Hi, how you been? No, his opening line of the message was, Remember our bet? Turns out, Kurt became a lawyer like his father and still had the paperwork for the bet. And he made it clear that he had every intention of collecting after Jane Citrus won the Oscar for Best Actress. This would clean me out, and then some. I'd be in serious debt. I'd be in major trouble. 
I was hoping he was bluffing about still having the contract. Without that, it was his word against mine and I'd be in the clear, so I insisted that he send me a copy. And he did. He still had the contract, and I was screwed. I couldn't let this happen, but what could I do? I looked closer at the contract and something interesting caught my eye. Kurt wrote up the contract back when he was a dim-witted teenager, and the way he worded it was strange. He didn't write down that he won the bet if Jane Citrus won the Oscar for Best Actress. He wrote that he won the bet if Jane Citrus was up on that stage holding the Oscar for Best Actress. What if Jane Citrus died before she won the Oscar? Even if she won the Oscar posthumously, she wouldn't be up on that stage holding the Oscar for Best Actress. She wouldn't be able to. She'd be dead. There was only one thing I could think of to remedy the situation. I had to kill Jane Citrus. I had some vacation time coming to me, so I took two weeks off and began my mission. Even though Jane Citrus was getting attention for her acting, she was nowhere near the world-famous celebrity she was when she was a teenager. See, back then, she was constantly surrounded by beefy security guards who wouldn't let anyone within 10 feet of her. But now, after having been out of the bright limelight for so long, she was leading a more normal lifestyle. It wasn't difficult for me to find her. She lived in a sprawling 400-acre ranch in Montana. Three stories wrapped around porches, bay windows. It was rather spectacular, to say the least. Bought and paid for with her teenage success money. The ranch was off the grid, and she had a live-in maid and a groundskeeper. She also had several large dogs and lots of signs expressing the fact that the ranch had security cameras all over it so killing her in her home was out of the question. But I was able to get close enough to observe her comings and goings. After a week of observation, I had her routine down pretty well. She was a night owl. She stayed up all night and went to bed in the morning. Every night, just before sundown, she drove into town alone. It was a small town about 10 minutes away, which consisted of mostly old brick buildings. She would park her car in front of a two-story place called the Lazy Coffee Shop and get a big cup of coffee and a donut. She'd sit by a corner window on the second floor and slowly ingest her coffee and donut while relaxing and looking out the window upon the quaint little town outside. She'd then get back into her car and go back to the ranch. From there, everything she did was done out of the home. The coffee shop run was the opportunity I needed to snuff the bet out of existence. I started following Jane Citrus to the lazy coffee shop, and I watched her. I had to wait for just the perfect moment. After a few nights, the stars aligned for me. All the parking spots in front of the lazy coffee shop were full, forcing Jane Citrus to drive down a long, lonely alley and park behind the building. After she entered the coffee shop, I gazed about to make sure no one else was around. The only person I noticed was a short, plump fellow near the edge of the sidewalk. After a moment, he stepped away and disappeared into the shadows, so I took that moment to dart behind the building. Her car was the only one back there. The area was dimly lit. It was perfect. I snuck behind a large dumpster that was about 10 feet from her vehicle and waited for her. It wasn't long before she returned to her vehicle. I could hear her footsteps coming all the way down the alley. I pulled my razor sharp six inch hunting knife from its sheath and got ready to attack. Once she rounded the corner and approached her vehicle, I launched myself toward her, holding the knife high in the air ready to strike. She turned around and let out a scream as I reached her. The Bat, Jane Citrus. Most people know me as Jane Citrus, 
but my real name is Jane Wojohowicz. I made a fortune in the late 1980s being someone I was not. I basically played a character named Jane Citrus, who was invented by my manager. My manager felt like if I pranced around in scantily clad outfits and sang about taboo subjects, it would create controversy, the controversy would create publicity, and the publicity would sell albums. She was correct. Don't get me wrong, I could sing well, and I'm a very entertaining performer on stage, but it's the sexual image that created the buzz. I would strut around half-naked and sing inappropriate songs. My biggest hit was called Pop Goes My Virginity. In reality, I never had sex until my wedding night when I was 24 years old. I could only keep up the facade of Jane Citrus for so long. After a few years, to the chagrin of my manager, I voluntarily pulled the plug on my music career. I made enough money that I didn't have to do it anymore if I didn't want to, and I didn't want to. I married the man I loved and we lived a happy life together until he passed away three years ago from injuries sustained by falling from a horse. I've been alone ever since as far as romantic relationships go. I have a maid and a groundskeeper at my ranch and I'm close with them. I also have four bull mastiffs, three horses, five cows, and eight chickens to keep me company. And that's all I need. I never planned on entering the spotlight again, but when that hotshot filmmaker approached me about being in his latest movie, I was intrigued. My favorite part of my music career was making the music videos. I enjoyed acting. It was a lot of fun and I was quite good at it. Looking back, performing in music videos was the only thing I missed about the old days. It did take some coaxing, but eventually I agreed to be in the movie, and in doing so, I found my true calling. I was made to act. I did it for the love of the art, not any kind of accolades or awards. Getting nominated for an Oscar is flattering, but I wish I hadn't been nominated. I don't like the publicity that comes with it. I didn't want to be standing up on that stage holding an Oscar for Best Actress. I had already made up my mind that I would not go to the ceremony. The hotshot director already asked me to play a role in his next movie, and I accepted. I can see myself doing this for some time. It brings me joy. My only reluctance is due to the negativity the spotlight brings. I had multiple stalkers when I was younger, and one persistent one that occasionally shows his face to this day. He's a short, plump man who always sports a five o'clock shadow. He's never assaulted me, threatened me, or done anything illegal. He just shows up from time to time and watches me. I'll see him standing across a street, or at a store, or at the gas station. He's always at a distance and never approaches me. He just stares at me. I've alerted the police on multiple occasions, but because he's never done anything to cause me harm, and because he always keeps a respectable distance, they can't do much about him. I spotted him just last week. Every night I like to have coffee and a donut at the lazy coffee shop in the small town near my ranch. I sit on the second floor where it's quiet and relaxed while gazing out over the town. I noticed him at a street corner standing under a street light staring up at me. When he realized that I had spotted him, he acted nervous and ran off. I told my maid and groundskeeper about the sighting. They insisted I stop going to my favorite coffee shop, but I refused to let someone else dictate how I would live my life. It was this attitude that kept me from going back home when there were no parking spots in the front of the lazy coffee shop, forcing me to park in the lonely, dim-lit back alleyway. After I went in, sat down, had my coffee and donut, I walked back down that long, lonely alley to my car. As I rounded the corner, pulled the car keys from my pocket, and reached for my car door, I heard a rustling sound coming from behind the dumpster. When I looked up, I saw a man dressed in dark clothing running at me, holding a knife in an attack position. I couldn't see the man well, 
but it had to be the stalker. He had just been waiting for the right time to kill me, and it appeared that tonight would be the night he succeeded. Then another man appeared behind the attacker, a short, plump man. That was my stalker. But if that was my stalker, who was the man who was trying to kill me? I let out a scream and instinctively backed up until I hit the concrete parking bumper which tripped me to the ground. As I lay on the ground helpless, I watched on as my stalker grabbed the attacker's arm, wrestled the knife from him, and then punched him square on the jaw with a left hook that would have made Joe Frazier proud. The attacker fell unconscious to the ground like a sack of potatoes. The relief that washed over me was fleeting as the stalker turned and gazed at me with intense eyes. He stepped over the body of the attacker and walked toward me. I was correct. He was just waiting for the right time. He was going to kill me. He wasn't going to let someone else do it. He wanted to do it himself. I screamed as he approached me and reached into his coat pocket. The Bat, The Stalker. I love Jane Citrus. I loved her since I was a teenager. The way she would gyrate around on stage wearing barely nothing, she took my breath away. But it wasn't just her sex appeal. I genuinely enjoyed her voice and her ability as a performer. And when she acted in all those music videos, I thought she was fantastic. I could honestly envision her standing on a stage holding an Oscar for Best Actress one day. I followed her around all over the world. You see, there was something I wanted. Something only she could give me. And I was going to get it by any means necessary. But the timing had to be right. A quiet, dimly lit location with nobody else around would be ideal. I wanted to be alone with her. I wanted her to remember me. Yes, the, the timing had to be perfect. It had been roughly 30 years now as I've waited inhumanly patient for the perfect moment that has never come. Until tonight. She parked behind the building of the Lazy Coffee Shop, her favorite place. She goes there every night just after dark for coffee and a donut. I hid in the shadows and watched as she ate and drank. She spotted me last week. I was extra careful tonight and she didn't see me. When I witnessed her preparing to leave the coffee shop, I bolted down the alley and hid behind a light post. The setting was perfect. It was everything I had ever envisioned. Tonight was the night. As she rounded the corner of the building and headed for her car, I was about to rush toward her, but some guy with a knife dashed out from behind a dumpster. This bastard was going to ruin everything. I sprinted out from behind the light post and engaged with the attacker. He was bigger than me, but I had the element of surprise on my side. I was able to wrestle the knife out of his hand. I then let loose with a left hook that collided with his jaw, just like the left hook that Joe Frazier floored Muhammad Ali with in their first fight. With the attacker subdued and Jane Citrus lying on the ground helpless, the time had finally come. I stepped over the attacker and approached her. I could feel the nerves welling within my body as I pulled the necessary tools for this task out of my coat pocket. Tonight was the night. I held out my pad of paper and pen. My voice was a little shaky, but I did it. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> 